Well, moments ago, ceremonial first pitch. Atticus Jenkins, Fergie's grandson, already ranking in the 99th percentile in sprint speed and in arm strength, according to StatCast. On a great day, Fergie Jenkins Day here at the ballpark. Great job, Atticus. Well, I mentioned Taylor McGregor downstairs, and she is with a very special guest, Fergie Jenkins, the unveiling of the Fergie statue. Fergie, congratulations. Awesome stuff. Taylor, I'll let you take it away, but that it was great to hear you and great to watch. Thanks so much, Boog. It really was. Man of the week, the hour, the year, Fergie seems to be. We've, uh, we've talked so much about this. Can you describe the moment when you saw the statue unveiled? Well, my kids had a chance to unveil it. Uh, I was quite surprised at the, still the expression on my face between pitches you throw. You kind of grit your teeth when you throw pitches, but I, I was surprised that, that, that the, the statue had that muscle type of look that I had when I was younger. <laughs> you told so many great stories, one of them going to a game with your dad and saying to your dad, I want to do that. What would the little boy who went to a game with your dad think of this? Well, the biggest thing is, when I was more than surprised when we go to Tiger Stadium and Larry Doby hit two home runs and the fans cheered for him. And that's kind of the reason I, I thought, man, I want to be a professional ball player. You also gave a shout out to the Bleacher Bums and Cubs Nation. What do they mean to you? Well, the, the, the Bleacher Bums started in, in, the, in like 68, 69 with the yellow helmets. Uh, Mike Haley, uh, probably uh, uh, Ray Myers and a bunch of the guys that were part of those Bleacher Bums. And Dick Selma was kind of the leader waving the towel from time to time when uh, the Bleacher Bums really got active. And Ron Grazzo used to walk the wall from left field to right field. And he was quite a guy, Ron Grazzo. <laughs> Billy Williams gave an amazing speech as well. What does he mean to you? Well, Billy and I have been friends. Uh, when I joined the ball club in 66, we had the same type of interests. He loved to hunt. He liked to fish. So in the off season, he'd come to Canada or go to Alabama and, and, and hunt and fish with him. What does it mean to you to have statues next to him, Ron Santo, Ernie Banks? Well, Ru Ru Ernie and I were roommates for three years, 67 through 69. And Ernie was just a, a true professional. But I played with Ronnie and, and, uh, and Billy longer. I mean, it just when you're teammates, you understand that when you play the game, you kind of honor each other. And, and it's kind of a hand, hand in hand when you shake hands. Because we, we try to do the things that are good for, for the ball club. And, and the nice thing about it is these guys were all professional, all of them. If somebody would have told you back then that all of you guys would have a statue out front of Wrigley, what would you have thought? I wouldn't have thought that uh, it's going to come true. But here it is, 2022. I'm, a, I'm in a statue with all three other guys. And, and they were all teammates, and I think it's sensational. 50, 100 years from now, people will be able to come to Wrigley Field, see your statue. What do you hope that they know about your legacy? Well, the nice thing about it, a lot of it's printed on the on the base of the statue. <laughs> what, I, what my capabilities were, what do I accomplish? So the nice thing about it is that I love to play the game. And Leo DeRocher gave me that opportunity to be a pitcher. I pitched every fourth day. And I won some ball games for this organization. And I'm quite proud to have worn that Chicago Cub uniform. I love how your mom told you, you always finish what you start. What would your mom think about this honor? Oh, uh, she'd be overwhelmed. I mean, she was the inspiration for me a lot of times playing because I would phone her a lot of times uh, after my league games and, and, and basically describe how, how I pitched or how I didn't pitch well. And she would just say, hey, it'll get better, son. You just think about it. you're supposed to do better. They expect you to do better. You can do better, that type of thing. I know J.D., John Shambi, Doug Glanville have a lot of questions as well. Boog? Yeah, I, you know, Fergie, we, we already played a clip from earlier. You were talking to the wind during your speech, and uh, you kind of predicted the fact that the wind was going to be a factor here today, and now it's playing out, unfortunately, not in the cup favor. Well, you know, coming to the ballpark, I'd come up uh, Irving Park, and I could always tell the, which way the flags were blowing just by making that little turn onto Irving Park and then when I got close to the ballpark I could see fans camping out waiting to to come into the ballpark back then the bleacher seats were like a dollar a seat and they'd be camping out waiting to get into bleachers 
I would have been tempted to turn around and drive home. <laughs> Well, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to do that. I was going to get paid. The money they paid me, I had to try to earn. <laughs> well, well, Fergie, I, I remember talking to you, interviewing you not long ago, and I love watching your Hall of Fame speech because it was so full of gratitude. You walked through your whole life and thanked people individually. But the line that stuck to me is that great rec recognition requires great responsibility. What does that mean to you today? Well, the biggest thing is similar. You know, I wouldn't have had that opportunity to have a statue made if it wasn't for great teammates behind me. You know, Sano, Kessinger, Beckard, Ernie Banks at first, and later on we, we had Pepitone and Hickman. I mean, there were so many good players. If they don't play good defense and score runs for me, I don't win ballgames. And to win here in Wrigley Field, to me, I think it takes stamina. You get yourself in great shape. You know what you're supposed to do. And you hope you can pitch deep into the ball game to try to win a ball game. If it's close or if the score is lopsided, but you got to try to win. How cool was it to see, I mean, multiple former players, not just former Cubs or former teammates, but other people from, I mean, CC Sabathia came out, Adam Jones was, was out. I mean, guys that, you know, you didn't necessarily play against, but came out to honor you. Well, I knew CC because he had won the Warren Spawn Award in, in, uh, in Oklahoma several times. But to see other athletes uh, come here, I think that's, it's, it, to me, it's, it's, it's understanding that we are all in a, a, in a certain class. And to honor another individual, I think that's outstanding. You know, Rich Nye was here, Billy, quite a few guys that, that were part of the, this Cub organization. So I think it's great. You know, Peralta hits another. And the Diamondbacks going home run crazy in this one as they have homered four times, two each by Rojas and Peralta, and they lead it 7-3. And even in the outs in this inning have been well struck. Uh, Varsho lined out deep to left. Walker hit a bullet to third base. A single Perdomo and a couple of home runs. And uh, Kyle, who looked like he'd kind of gotten things back in order last inning, really getting knocked around here in the top of the fifth. So four homers matches a career high for most allowed by the professor. Fergie, I want to sort of build on Doug Glanville's question specifically when it comes to Canadian born players. What type of responsibility do you feel being the greatest baseball player ever to be Canadian born? Well, I love the game. And I, I first got noticed playing hockey and then basketball in high school. And I only played baseball in the summer. Uh, that was from May to maybe September. A bunch of guys that we lived in the neighborhood. And I got good at, at playing first base. So when Gene DeJura came to my hometown, he watched me throw. And he says, probably your best position would probably be as a pitcher. And he kind of changed my mind about being a pitcher instead of a first baseman. So being lucky enough to have that scout look at me and then winning ball games, I had Detroit come to my hometown, Boston, Pittsburgh, uh, geez, Boston Red Sox. And, I, and the nice thing about it is that Phillies were the first organization, so I decided to sign with them. But Gene was the individual that turned my thinking around from being a first baseman to being a pitcher. And off of that, then you come here to Chicago. How did your time in Chicago impact your life beyond baseball? Well, I got into a winning mode uh, that, that, that first year as a starter. And when you win, it kind of changes your thinking about being a pitcher. Because I enjoyed pitching here on the road or at home. And winning is, was part of what a winning pitcher can thrive on. So when I became a winning pitcher, I said to myself, I got to try to be consistent as much as possible. And I tried to win 20 games every year. And winning you did six straight 20 win seasons, 267 complete games, 3,000 strikeouts with less than 1,000 walks. That was our Duncan Pole question of the day. What do you think is the most impressive? Well, I didn't walk people. You know, this kind of ballpark that you play in and the win factor, you walk people and then all of a sudden there's a double or a home run. Now you're three or four runs down. So you can't afford to make mistakes and, and make the hitter do part of the work because that's what those outfielders are for, infielders are for. And, and that's what the game is all about, having them play good defense behind you. 
All right, we're going to keep Fergie Jenkins for the next half inning, but for now we're going to go to break. Diamondbacks lead the Cubs as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Hey, Fergie, Rhino here. I want to congratulate you on your statue at Wrigley Field. I'm not sure what the appropriate adjective is. I always look up to you, even as like a kid, and I still do now. Wonderful, amazing, awesome, beautiful. So I'll just say hats off to you, my friend. I couldn't have been more determined for a great human being, for the person that you are and what you do on and off the field. What a great teammate you were. You played the game the right way and the class act. Fergie, congratulations. All right. Congratulations from all your former teammates. Having them in attendance, what does that mean to you? Well, it's good to have uh, the ballplayers come back to Wrigley. I know they enjoy being here, but to have them complimentary, uh, to say things about me, you know, it's always nice to know that these guys love to play behind me or play with me, and I think that's great. How would you describe the relationship that you all still have to this day? Well, the nice thing about it is we love coming back here to Wrigley Field and being a Chicago Cub. From Rhino to Andre Dawson to Lee Smith to Billy Williams, we love putting that uniform on and playing. You've said a couple times that you're just so glad to be back here at Wrigley Field. What makes it special returning to this place? Well, my career really started to blossom here uh, in, uh, in the 60s when I got traded. So that was really important. A lot of times you get traded and you don't stay long. But I stayed here 10 years, which was really nice. So I want to I want to turn the clock way back, Fergie, to when you were a kid growing up in Ontario, and the stories that you were you honed your skill by throwing rocks between uh, train cars or into into an ice chute of a coal plant. What well, tell us that right. story? Well, the Chesapeake and Ohio had a spur uh, at the east end of town, and they would come through maybe late in the afternoon after school. And guys would have contests throwing rocks in between the train cars, or if they had an open box car, who could hit it? And I used to win most of the contests. Maybe uh, I'd throw it ten times. I, I'd, I'd win it eight or nine times out of out of the ten. Fergie, there's so many young ball players who look up to you. What advice do you have for those dreaming of having a career in Major League Baseball? Well, the biggest thing is being scouted and, and understanding what that position is you're playing and working on your on your skill. Skill is very important. Uh, good habits, uh, fundamentals, and by far, if they want you to do something, they're your coach. Listen to them because they've done it before you. Boop. All right, Taylor, thanks. Fergie, awesome stuff and what a... Great, great day. That one tapped to the right side. Walker slings, and they get the out there at second. And so now there are two outs. Fergie, before we let you go, one of the things I did want to ask you, how did you get so involved on social media? Because it's one of the things I do love is that you get to connect with fans. And honestly, you and I connected on social media before I had met you in person. Tell me about how that started. Well, you know, social media is, is the way of life nowadays. Yeah. And Brad, uh, who is part of my social media, we talk on a daily basis on plays, retirement, things that are going on in, in the world. And the nice thing about it, we basically coincide and understand that printing the certain things that are, that are going on in the news, people want to hear it, and especially baseball fans. I loved hashtag Fergie Week that you tweeted out. <laughs> you got some good hashtags. I will oh, give yeah. you that. Well, that, that's something that, that keeps people's interest. I don't know how many f followers I have, but a lot of them, are, they have, they'll answer me and they'll write in and they want to know what I'm doing, where I'm living. And the nice thing about it is that I try to keep up with the sport of baseball because I love the game. I think we have one of your tweets that you tweeted out earlier this week. Your grandson, Atticus, you can see it up there. Right. He, he got, got a uniform. Jersey. He had a uniform and wristbands. That's really nice. 
And then his first pitch, I mean, we need to get a scouting report on this. Yeah, we walked him right up to, and that's the first time he's ever had a ball in his hand. He dropped it after about three or four steps, and I picked it up, put it back in his hand, and he held on to it. And I'm quite surprised. We might have another athlete on our hands. <laughs> I was going to say, might be the first time, won't be the last. Bergie, we appreciate your time. Congratulations. You. It has been so much fun for all of us to embrace this celebration this week and, and much, much deserved. So appreciate your time. Thanks I appreciate so much. Thanks, Bergie. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Bergie. guys. Great appreciate stuff. Appreciate it. All right. What a day. Are we ready? A one, a two, three. Take me out to the ball. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crackers. Ah. Uh...